Naptown Tuner. We've got our first emergency video, okay? This is an emergency response video, and uh, but it's gonna be perfect. It's, it'll still be perfectly detailed, like everything else, okay? What we have here is a 2.0 TFSI P0016 camshaft crankshaft correlation, all right? A lot of times it'll be extended crank time on the start. Um, we got a timing, timing chain is out of time. We got the old style chain, new style chain. We got a lot of details. We'll get into it right now. Here's where we're starting with this video. I've got other videos that show disassembly. Okay, we're not doing the balance shaft uh, timing chain right now. We're just doing uh, the camshaft timing chain and uh, we're leaving the oil pump chain alone right there. All right, so the old tensioner we unbolt and then the new tensioner, the new style that looks like this gets bolted in. All right, we'll bolt that in. And then uh, we have just the cams sitting there in their top dead center float position, okay? And the crank down here, that arrow is usually just a little bit, a little bit off like this, right there. This is where the bottom go. This is the one that's hard to locate, like you can locate it, but sometimes when you pull a pin, it'll be a half toothed off or something. So I'm about to show you that. So once you have the, uh, new style tensioner in then you throw uh, the guide rails in I'll show you how to do that so on the intake side this is the intake rail there's the old style that's this one right here all right and then the updated style is this one right here okay I don't know for sure if you order parts or or what you prefer to do. Um, honestly, both of them are fine in my opinion. Uh, this one's obviously gonna guard against uh, going out of time again in the future better because it curls around uh, the chain more with this with these two lips. But uh, this one's more friendly to the mechanics uh, if if you want to uh, take stuff apart and adjust stuff and things like that. But uh, if you have a good timing chain on it, anyway. So the other side never changed. It still it still looks like this. I'll go ahead and install this rail because it's the more difficult rail to deal with, and then I'll explain as I go. Uh, same process with this. It's just uh, sm smaller. As for this upper timing chain guide, this is what the updated style looks like. It's a little bit longer with some lips that go on either side. Let me put it up here for comparison. Okay. First, I'm gonna install the chain with this old one so you can see what it looks like with the timing. And then I'm gonna take that off and install it with this one. The links on the old style timing chain are gonna look like this. If you have an updated style timing chain, the links are going to look like this. If you have an old style tensioner, it will look like this. This is the old style tensioner. This is what it looks like, it's trash, and I'm gonna show you why, okay? This right here, see those grooves right there? That's what is the, those back, back cut grooves are what uh, operates the, the safety mechanism in this tensioner. So if I pop this cover off, I'll show you. The whole thing is operated by this little tiny paw right here. See that little, those little tiny back slut slots right there? Those uh, probably what, three little tiny back cut slots are what holds this entire plunger into place. And that's the safety mechanism for keeping your timing chain in time. If for instance, your timing chain is stretched and these little tiny back, back slot keyways slip and let this plunger go all the way and travel in, your, your gears will go whoosh, and then your chain will slip, all right? That's what happens. 
All right, so if you have this style tensioner, it's trash and you need to throw it away. But uh, how you would, uh, if for some reason you wanted to pin this and uh, service it, what you do is you release it and j just so you know, just trying to service it damages it because what you're doing is you're prying up against those little tiny back cut slots and then you're pushing the plunger in with that released and then you're pinning it right over here, all right? So once you had pushed the plunger in all the way, see, I can, I can even do it now without the tool in it. Once you push the plunger in it all the way, then you would pin it right there and I can hardly even do it by hand. It's a little bit difficult. There's a lot of spring pressure in there. What you would do is you would, you would uh, put the pin in there, right there. So if you have this style, you need to throw it away anyway. Uh, the updated style is gonna look like this, okay? And then I'll show you what the improved design is. So instead of having one little tiny ridges uh, slot of back cut teeth in one spot this has an entire spiral all the way around and then it has a little spring that locks it all the way around rather than in one little tiny path all right and how you would do this one is uh this one's actually a lot more difficult than even the first one especially if you're trying to service it in the vehicle but how you do this one is there's not even really a special tool for it or anything you just have to take a small pair of pliers or some type of little something small, what I've used is like a little uh, binder clip. And then you push it in, and then you take this tool right here, and then you, you slide that into place. And that's what you have to do to service it. Let's install the timing chain. And the first time I install it, I'm going to put it in with the old style, okay, upper timing chain guide. And then I'm also going to make a mistake. I'm going to make it a half tooth off, and then I'm going to show you how to fix it. Let's go. So what we have first is we have a lot of normal links and then we have some copper links, all right? These two up here that are close together are gonna go on the marks on the cams. And then we have one way down here that's gonna go on the crankshaft. So before we get to this, let's bolt in those uh, rails we're talking about, but we can just kinda lay this right here, see? See that? I just uh, laid it on these snouts and it's just kind of sitting there. Now let's get to our rails. First rail, I said we're gonna do the uh, new style. So we slide these up in here. They're not necessarily the most fun things to work with. And uh, that just sits right there for now. You see that? And then uh, we have another one over here and that can just kind of hang out right there all right now you see that i already kind of just threw that up on the top what we got now is uh we need to get our 18 millimeter and i prefer to use a flank drive plus uh snap on or maybe some other wrench that has a little uh notches cut in it that helps you get some more grip because these things are going to be spring loaded and what you do is there's a little notch in there in the cam and um, you're gonna locate this intake one first and then you're gonna spin it over and you're gonna put it on the exhaust all right now uh so this one has holes in it and that's really good because uh, this could help me out a lot because I could put a zip tie right here and right here and that holds that into place But uh, I'm going to show you a couple other trips tricks too. These oil filter pliers work really well They're like oil filter vice grips. They work really well for holding cam gears It's just barely setting on it to just keep the chain in place. This one had uh, Holes in it. So I was able to put zip ties But you see how these copper links on this one are lined up to these lines and then on this one There's just gonna be a brown line right there all right and then the top of it will look like this you're gonna have uh, half moons that go all the way down to those bolts for the cylinder heads all right both sides 
guide is sitting there. Let's look at the bottom. At the bottom, we're gonna have a triangle, a little tiny triangle. That uh, brass link is gonna line up with it. It might not be perfect. You might have to spin the crank a little bit. This might be a little bit difficult if you don't have this bolt in tight enough. But if you don't have this bolt in tight enough, you can just take a pair of pliers and gently spin this gear. But you really need to have this, you know, not all the way tight, but zipped in. Okay, so let me show you how to pull out a little bit of slack. So this is the part that people often fail at, okay? This little tiny triangle has to be perfectly lined up. So what I, and then there's often slack in the chain. So what you have to do is you have to locate it. You have to locate that little tiny triangle and then it's a good idea to pull the slack out of the chain and then get all the slack on this timing chain side over here and then just let that sit right there. Now let me get you in so you can get a better look at this. Now it's perfectly on. All I would need to do in reality is put this pivot bolt in and then pull this plunger. But before I do that, first I'll show you what the timing marks should look like on the top cams to finish off that portion. This old style, when it clicks into place, you're gonna be, from this mark, you're gonna be one and a half links to that style upper guide. And then you're gonna be two full lengths on this side when it's in time, when it's top dead center, okay? You can tell if it's top dead center manually if you take the spark plug out and then you take your long quarter drive extension and then you take your 24 millimeter on the crank and you'll spin it until it goes and then it plateaus to the very top, all right? That's how you tell top dead center when everything's apart, okay? Uh, even if you had, even if you didn't want to take the bottom case back off, you could spin the bottom crank to top dead center and look at it manually like this and not have to rely on the bottom marks, the bottom timing marks that I, that I refer to in my previous video about removing the timing chain. Okay, I show, I show how ridiculously hard it is to see those marks anyway. Sometimes it's easier just to plateau top dead center and then look at these marks. So if you have the old style guide and then you go like this and you get the very top dead center manually, it should look like this, a tooth and a half on this side, two teeth on this side. Stay tuned and I'll show you what it looks like with this style, okay? Okay, if you have a need to verify timing after you did the timing chain for any reason, this is the new style upper timing guide, okay? So you can plateau top dead center with this right here after you take the spark plug out, all right, by spinning the crank. And then this is what it should look like, okay? You should have half a tooth on this exhaust side and then the entire link should be covered by that guide right there. That, the entire brass link, all right? That's what it looks like when it's top dead center at the bottom and the top, okay? If you plateau it and it's, it doesn't look like that, if it's, if it's top dead center and it doesn't look like that on either one of those guides, it's still P0016, it's still out of time. When you're checking it, you, I have it lined up with the actual brass links, but you don't have to have the brass links lined up. What you're looking at is you're making sure that this line right here and that line right there correlate to this style or this style upper guide like I expressed. Does that make sense? Think about what I just said. You're not necessarily checking it with these brass links like I'm doing right now if you're just if you ran the engine or the engine span o spun over, it, you're, you're not gonna be able to line these back up unless you spin the engine over like over a hundred times organically. So now let me cover, let me cover a few different scenarios, all right? If it's a toe-in, if it's a toe-in, uh, it's a possibility that it just barely tagged the valves, all right? It's really difficult to tell sometimes if it barely tagged the valves. It's possible that it maybe snagged one cylinder or two cylinders, 
maybe just enough to just make it barely run wrong. First off, you have to make sure if if you if you say okay, let's do a timing chain first, all right, to get it back in time because we think that we can fix it with a timing chain, all right. Then after it's fixed, you no longer have you you should no longer have a timing fault, and you should verify that it's in time, all right. If nothing else, just do what I did. Verify it manually with the quarter drive extension on the crank, all right? That way you don't even have to take anything apart or do anything down there. And then it should verify it with what it, I told you it should look like on the top. Since there's no actual marks, instead of actually putting the links physically back on and taking it all apart. So I hope verify that Verify that that triangle is perfect. Then you would pull this pin, okay, just straight back. What I like to do is push that guide out further even more with my hand and then I like to take that spring and I like to push it in. And then what I like to do is I like to take a pair of pliers on this crank and I like to spin it back and forth just a little bit just to look at the tensioner and make sure that the tensioner is holding it in real good. All right, then I look at the marks again. I look at the bottom and I look at the top, okay? If you're doing that much work, you double, triple check. All right, then you don't have to redo anything. So now you see why it's so difficult to verify if the timing's perfect after you do that. But what you need to do is you need to verify that the timing is perfect. You should no longer have the P0016, and then you can proceed to doing a compression test. Then you can proceed to figuring out what specific cylinder or what cylinders need attention. Then you can proceed with removing the cylinder head, putting a rebuilt cylinder head on, or figuring out uh, if individual things can be repaired. I'll do future videos on more scenarios. Until next time, Naptown Tuner.